Oh, good morning to you. Yes, sir. Good coffee, good Bible, good word, good God. I've been talking to you the last couple of days about God's only good. Now, we're going to read this out of the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus had said that the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Very simple. And I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And then we studied in James that says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness. Now, you can see behind me, it's just getting daybreak here this morning. And it's going to be daybreak all day long. It's going to be daybreak on me. It's going to be daybreak on you. I mean, the sun's going to shine all day. The blessings of God's going to overtake me because God's not a respecter of persons. Now, let me read this. We'll just really kind of use this one verse, but I want you to see it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Not the same, the Holy Ghost and with power, but watch this. Who went about doing good? <laughs> That's so simple. I wonder, how do people get this stuff messed up? Who went about doing good? Now watch, and, only good, and, because the and means these two are together. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Right there it is, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Oop, there was some of my papers, but we'll get them later. Now watch this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with power and the Holy Ghost. So you got God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. So here we all have all three of them in this one verse. How God anointed Jesus, number two, with the Holy Ghost, number three. So the triune God, the Trinity, here all says the same thing. How God went about doing good. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who did, who went about doing good. Didn't say doing good sometimes. You know, Hang on just a minute. I really do like my coffee first thing in the morning. You would think that somewhere in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, that if God was going to leave anybody sick to teach them something, that Jesus would have said that. But not one time do you find Jesus saying to anybody, well, God sent this to you in order to teach you something. Not one time. Everybody that came to Jesus, Jesus healed them when, he, when they made the request, and I like to use the word demand, on the faith of God. The woman with the issue of blood came to Jesus and said, 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 because the power is released when you say something, if I can touch but the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She told the what? She told the when. And she told the how. She said it, she said it, she said it, for she was continually saying, if I can touch the hem of the garment, I'll be made whole. She had to go to him because that's what she said. Now, some people didn't have to go to him, but when she got there, Jesus didn't say, God sent that to you to teach you something. No, he felt power go out of her because she put a demand on that power. Now watch, let's go back to that verse in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He was anointed now. The anointing breaks every yoke and gets rid of every curse that's on your life. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the power and Holy Ghost who went about doing good, no evil, but doing good. And I love this next phrase. It simplifies it for me. Who went about doing good and healing all. Didn't say some of them. Didn't say some that was the will of God and some that wasn't the will of God. He healed every one of them. And healing all, and it clarifies it, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So that very plainly tells me that the devil is the one that oppresses with sickness, and God's the one that heals with divine health and divine life. And it didn't leave it for us to discuss that. Who went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts 10, 38, powerful verse. Let me just quote it again. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, so he was anointed to do this job, who went about doing good. <laughs> no bad, 
No, I don't think I feel like it today. None of that was there. None of that had to do with the sovereignty of God that the church talks about. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all. Every one of them that were oppressed of the devil. So the devil is the oppressor. Jesus is the healer. So the devil's the one that makes people sick and oppresses them with sickness. God doesn't do it at all. And God can't make you sick because after all, it's the perfect will of God for you to be well. And then it went on to say, and God was with him. God was with who him? The him who was Jesus. So if God was with him, though it's, then it's the will of God to heal them. And I like to use this phrase to heal them all. You may be sitting there this morning with a pain somewhere. You know, I've, I've had a pain in my shoulder for some reason over the next few days. God didn't give that to me so I couldn't sleep good. God didn't give that to me so he could teach me to depend on him for healing. No, no, no. The devil put that pain on me to make me in discomfort and to try to destroy my life. Well, I resist the devil and receive the good, which is God, because God so loved that he gave. God is a good God, and he gave Jesus to get you free from all your junk, so quit blaming God for it. Blame the devil for it. Receive the good. Receive your healing. And until I'm with you tomorrow, saints, hey, remember all day long, Jesus is Lord. Thank God the word works.